This is Rome, a very small city on the Italian peninsula. Then it became this, followed by this, and then this piece of majesty. Rome Review. The founding of Rome. Two brothers, Romulus and Ramus, discover the land which will be Rome. Romulus kills his brother, Ramus, so he can have the land to himself. Romulus then founds Rome. Look at these vast rolling hills, perfect to build an empire, Ramus. You're right, Romulus. And we can even rule it together. Yes, together. <laughs> Geography of the city of Rome. The Mediterranean Sea was towards every direction except north. To the north are rolling hills in the Alps, making evasion from there difficult. The Tiber River provides fresh water and trade. Most of the land contains soil for farming that was arable. Life in the Republic Romans were very religious and superstitious. They would hold lavish dinners and would actually throw up to eat more. All their actions were based on omens and nature that were sent from the gods, and it was not uncommon in Rome to have arranged marriages. The people of Rome saw property as the greatest resource. Superstition. The Romans believed in magic, curses, astrology, and other mythical creatures such as werewolves. Bees and snakes were considered messages from the gods, and to Romans, sneezing was a terrible thing, for whatever reason. Oh, hey, how is it going, my friend? Not very well. My wife sneezed and the gods cursed their entire crop yield this year. What a shame. Yes, indeed. Influence of the Etruscans. The Etruscans showed Romans metalworking and engineering. In the beginning, they also traded with the Romans and later conquered them. Later, the Romans adapted Etruscan art and broke free of their monarchy and started the Roman Republic. Greek influence. The Greeks traded extensively with early Romans, and the Romans adapted Greek art and architecture, such as the Cornithian columns. The Greek language was also used by some in the city of Rome. The Latins and their culture. They were originally Indo-European settlers that founded Rome, for real this time, not a legend, and their language became the main language of Rome for the next 1,000 years. The language itself spread throughout the entire Mediterranean. What is a republic? The Romans founded the first republic, and only the patricians could take part in the government. The citizens elected the senators, and the senators chose the magistrates. The most powerful of the magistrates were the consuls. The consuls had to both agree because one could veto the other. The Roman conquest of the Italian peninsula. The Romans conquered or allied with the remaining Italian tribes on the peninsula and gave them all citizenship and did not oppress them in order to earn their favor. This is what kept them united. How do we traverse these recently conquered lands while also opening up trade and military roads in the process? I believe I have the solution. And that solution is roads. Road, 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 road. Road, 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 road. The First Punic War. The First Punic War lasted from 264 BCE to 241 BCE. The war was between Rome and Carthage. Carthage started strong, but was eventually defeated by the Romans. Rome added Sicily and Syracuse to its lands. Choose your fighter! Fate has selected Rome. Three, two, one, fight! Rome wins. The Second Punic War. It lasted from 218 BCE to 202 BCE. In the war, Hannibal took 36,000 troops and 37 war elephants and conquered most of Rome. The final battle happened at Zama, and the Romans defeat Hannibal. After, Carthage was forced to destroy their navy and forfeit their commercial empire. They also had to pay reparations. 
Send in the elephants! <laughs> Rome never dies. The Third Punic War. It lasted between 149 BCE and 146 BCE, a total of three years. It was primarily between Rome and Carthage, and it was in the end a decisive victory for the Romans after the Carthaginian insulted a Roman delegate. This ended in the annexation of all Carthage's territory, and all Carthaginians were either killed or enslaved. Carthage became the province called North Africa within Rome. One. Four. Five. Hey, delegate! Why? These people starving here. Spread the wealth, you degenerate. <laughs> Several months later. These Carthaginians paid for their sins with their blood. Now sow the fields of Carthage with salt so that Carthage may never grow again. Conquests of the Republic Between the Second and Third Punic Wars, Rome conquered most of the Hellenistic areas, such as Macedon and Greece. They usually offered some level of citizenship to conquered peoples, but not always. They expanded west and took over some Spanish territory, and in the late days of the Republic, Pompey had campaigns to the east. Why, hello, kind Roman. Hello. Tis a nice city you have here. Very nice. I think I want it for myself. What do you mean? <laughs> Roman legions. The Roman legions consisted of mainly Roman citizens and some non-citizens who wished to gain citizenship. The legions consisted of 3,000 to 5,000 men and also contained a cavalry dis detachment. Harsh discipline was used in Roman legions to keep order. After 25 years of service, you could be rewarded with land or your citizenship. The gap between plebeians and patricians. The plebeians were poor and had no political rights whatsoever until the introduction of the plebeian council. The plebeians were lesser in comparison to patricians within Roman society. And the patricians were extremely wealthy landowners while the plebeians had nothing. Sir, sir, money, sir. Please, sir. Thank you, kind sir. Lowly creature. Sir, sir, what do you mean? Ah. Roman citizenship. Citizenship in Rome gave a person more rights. Slaves were owned by citizens and were not citizens themselves. Freed men in Rome were not automatically given their citizenship, and members of colonies had minor rights and could often not acquire their citizenship. Enter. No, sir. Sit. Yes, sir. What is your business here? Um, I heard that this is the way to get citizenship. Uh, here's, here's the money. What is this pittance? That's you, know, you know that it's twice the value. But, sir, that was what we were supposed to decide. If, you, if you're part of a colony, you can't become a citizen. But, sir... Get out of my... Can get I just my, my money back? No. Degenerates like you belong in a cross. Heavy taxes and army loyalties. Taxes were high in Rome, especially during war and times of crisis. 
Trade deals with colonies were often very one-sided. Rome's armies later included more mercenaries than soldiers who were loyal to Rome's currency rather than the state herself. Oh, it better not be the same guy again. Sir. Oh, what is your business here? Can I sit down, sir? Fine, sit. Okay, well, I, I read somewhere on the post outside that you, you could also try at signing up for the military, 25 years. Yes, indeed. If you're here for the mili military, that's a different story. Yes, sir. I wish to join the military. Okay. Right here is, is your payroll. There. Really? Well, uh, you're going to need your sword, so hand me three. Oh, th what? Three? Three? Uh, I, I, I guess. That's... Um, well, yeah. And four for the I armor. so much. Wait, what? And I'm over. Uh, uh, okay. And all the rest for the spear. Wait, what do you... What? A spear? Here you go. And now you're in the military. You're also broke, too. Roman gladiators. Gladiator matches could consist of fights between people and fights of people on animals. There were many different types of gladiators in Rome, and these gladiators were commonly slaves. These slaves could be freed if their performances were good in the Colosseum. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> Roman trade. The main trade partners of Rome were Spain, France, mid the Middle East, North Africa, and Greece. The trade deals were often one-sided. The trade was normally for resources unfindable on the Roman peninsula. Trade was very important to the Roman economy. Hello, Spaniard. I've, I've come to sample your finest wines. Of course, fine Roman. Only the finest. It shall be five denarii. That's, that's only one, sir. Nothing more. But that's only two. Disloyal generals. Soldiers were often conscripted from all over the Roman lands. Soldiers were more often loyal to their legion's general than Rome herself. And there were many civil wars at this time as generals attempted to take over Rome with their loyal armies. Come, soldier, we must fight for the Republic! Yes, Consul. No. Remember where your true loyalties lie. Yes, General. What is this treason? Reform attempts. There were new reforms to give soldiers land, and Gaius Marius made reforms to create more efficient legions in 107 BCE. Relations were improved between plebeians and patricians as plebeians gained more rights. Sulla launched a civil war and became dictator in order to try to save the Republic from collapsing. Man, I really sure gl am glad I showed how easy it is for anyone to just walk in and take over the Roman Republic. Now, it's time to restore power to the Senate. And... Go back to my farming life. Piracy. The coasts of the Mediterranean were subject to a lot of piracy. Trade routes were often raided by pirates, and at one point Caesar was even captured by pirates. After he got his freedom, he really gave them the common method of punishment, crucifixion. How you be fair in there? You know when I get free, I will crucify you. That'd be a good one there, laddie. The only time that'll happen is when the seven seas freeze over. Several months later. Yarrr! You only speak the truth there, laddie. Yarrr! I do keep my promises, laddie. Yarrr! Caesar forms a triumvirate. Caesar establishes the rule of three men with himself, Pompey, and Crassus. Crassus is the wealthiest man in Greece, and there's also a minor general. Pompey is the strongest general at this point in time and has the support of the army. Caesar is the most charismatic of the three and has the love of the people on his side. And this is why he was such an effective consul. Caesar's Gallic Campaign Caesar invades Gaul, and while he's there, he becomes a legend back home in Rome. He besieges his last fort. This last fort contained 100,000 Gallic men. His force only contained 42,000. He then decided that the best strategy was to build a wall around the fort's wall, and another wall around that one, to protect his 42,000 men. 
Then, 250,000 Gallic soldiers showed up as reinforcements. He took his cavalry from his legion, sent them out up from the wall, and around back behind the 250,000 Gallic soldiers. He then used them to trick the Gallic soldiers into believing that this was an entire another Roman legion. This would have led to the 250,000's defeat, so they ran. This allowed Caesar to finish off the rest of the Gauls in the fort and taking a massive amount of prisoners. One third were killed, another third were enslaved, and the last third had all of their hands cut off. Caesar then sent word back to the senators, and with that, he became the governor of Gaul. Caesar, you must leave Gaul at once, or you shall suffer the consequences. You will be the only one suffering, disgusting Gaul. Caesar's Civil War. Pompey gets the government to remove C Caesar's power as he believes Caesar has become a threat to the Republic. Caesar starts a civil war in retaliation and is vi victorious. Pompey is pushed out of Rome and flees to Egypt. Once Pompey reaches Egypt, he is beheaded by Ptolemy. You know what, Consul? I think you should get rid of Caesar's rights. He's done nothing good for the Republic, and he grows closer to a dictator day by day. By the gods, Pompey. You're absolutely right! Several months later. I came, I saw, I conquered. A few moments later. What do those damn Egyptians do? So uncivilized. Caesar becomes dictator for life. Caesar appoints himself the dictator perpetuum, or dictator for life. He was then murdered in 44 BCE by Brutus and 20 other senators who believed that they could save the Republic by killing him, as he had destroyed it by becoming the eternal dictator. This assassination unfortunately caused great unrest within the people who loved Caesar deeply. It ended up destroying the Republic and gave way for Augustus. All right, so the plan is we're going to kill Caesar. All right, All right. Yeah. wait, wait, here it comes. I can natural. Hey, Caesar! My dearest friends, let me tell you of my next grand conquest. Yes, do tell. Uh, so, the details are... Uh, 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 et tu, Brute. Augustus takes over. Octavian waged war on Mark Antony and conquered Egypt. Mark Antony, however, commits suicide. Octavian, son of Caesar, now becomes the first emperor of Rome and changes his name to Augustus. The Republic is now completely gone, although the Senate still does remain. I, Octavian, know Augustus shall follow in my father Caesar's footsteps and build the greatest empire that any has ever seen. Peace shall reign for centuries. A few moments later. I am Mark Antony. Now renounce myself as leader of Egypt. <laughs> the Pax Romana. Augustus instates the Pax Romana, a long period of peace that will last for 200 years. During this time, the border defenses are strengthened. The empire grew up to 2 million square miles, and they built many temples, theaters, and monuments, and the Roman army expanded up to 300,000 men, and became the world's greatest fighting force. Yes, my people, build my empire, for there shall be Pax Romana for centuries to come. Trade in the Empire Since the peace lasted for 200 years, even after Augustus' death in 14 CE, trade expanded greatly. These trade partners were Spain, Africa, and Western Asia. Rome's exports of pottery, metal goods, glass, wine, and olive oil gave them great value in the trades, but since these were all provinces of Rome, they did not treat them fairly and would often take things for much less than they were actually worth. Rome used their common currency that they spread throughout all their colonies as their primary form of this trade. Hello, Spaniard. I've, I've come to sample your finest wines. Of course, fine Roman. Only the finest. It shall be five denarii. That's, that's only one, sir. Nothing more. But that's only two. The stages of decline in the Roman Empire are firstly, 
internal problems, secondly, failed reforms, and lastly, loss of strength in the empire, and it is eventually sacked by barbarians. The first stage of decline, internal problems. The problems with politics, economy, and military weakened the empire. Their trade had become less profitable, and Rome did not have the funds to support the empire. To avoid debt, Rome raised their taxes, and Rome entered a state of inflation. During these hard times, the citizens of Rome became less patriotic and less likely to support the empire. People of Rome, don't you love your emperor? No. Sir, your approval ratings have never been this low. Well, what about our treasury? It's filled to the brim. My emperor, we're broke. Well, Rome's crop yield, it has enough food to, to feed Rome for centuries. Our harvest has not been this bad in centuries, my emperor. Well, what about our legions? They're, they're the strongest they've ever been. Sir, our army consists of mostly mercenaries who will change on a whim. Well, what about the barbaric tribes? They have no way of attacking. They're too weak. They're about to launch a full frontal assault. Sir, and my emperor, no. It is custom you die with your people. The second stage of decline. Reforms. Diocletian splits the empire into the west half and the east half. There is debate on how useful this was. It helped manage the empire better, but it split it up and made it weaker in independent halves. After he died, there was a great power struggle. Time following after his death, an emperor named Constantine came into power. During his time, he took the capital of the Roman Empire and changed it from Rome and brought it to a city named Constantinople, which he named after himself. He also made the religion of Christianity legal. During this time, the West became weak, and the East managed to prosper through trade further east. I, Constantine, have now made the, the religion of Christianity now legal to the populace. I have as well moved the capital of Rome, that was Rome, from, from Rome itself over to Constantinople, which is now not Rome, named after yours truly. I foresee no ill effects of this. The third and final stage of decline. The Western Empire is destroyed. The Roman citizens are no longer patriotic and do not care about the well-being of the empire. And as the West continued to get weaker through lack of trade and further debts, the Germanic tribes pushed out by the Huns finally invaded in 370 CE, and the Western Empire officially fell in 410 CE. The Roman Empire was now gone, and the Eastern Empire formed the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantines would last until the Ottomans. Ah, the Roman Empire. The safest empire in the whole world. With no foreseeable invaders at any time within the future. Ah! <laughs>